بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله I'm Ashraf Khater, Professor of Surgery in Mansoura University, Egypt and we are speaking about the breast anatomy, the second episode What about the structure of the breast? Now we are speaking about the structure of the breast Number one, as we see in this photo, the skin of the breast The skin of the breast or the skin over the breast is showing two important structures Apart from the envelope of the skin covering the breast, there's two important structures. Number one, the nipple, and as we know, there's nearly 15 to 20 uh, uh, openings that open uh, of the milk duct open into the nipple, and this is very important. And the second is the areola, which is a dark area around the nipple, and the areola nearly its circumference is, a, is about four centimeters, and. The areola contains three types of gland. Sweat gland, sepaceous gland, and what we call Montgomery, Montgomery follicles. What are the Montgomery follicles? Montgomery follicles is an accessory mammary gland. Accessory mammary glands. Number two, what about the glandular element? As we see in this photo, the glandular element, the breast is divided by Cooper's ligament into large lobes. And these lobes are further divided into lobules. And these lobules contain the acini. Acini are responsible for secretion. And these acini are surrounded by myoepithelial cells responsible for, by contraction, ejection. So the acini secretion and the myoepithelial cells for ejection of this secretion. And all of this goes into the duct system. What is the duct system? The duct system arises by small ductules from the acini into what we call intralobular ducts. The intralobular ducts unite to form extralobular ducts. And these extralobular ducts unite to form what we call lactiferous ducts. And the lactiferous ducts produce what we call lactiferous sinus just before the nibble and the lactiferous sinus which is dilatation open directly into the nibble. Very important to know what we call terminal duct lobular unit. What's meant by this? Terminal duct lobular unit. It is the lobule containing the acini and the terminal ducts which are the ductules and intra lobular ducts and the extra lobular ducts with the surrounding stroma this unit is under control of estrogen hormone so it is called terminal duct lobular unit because it is under control of the estrogen hormone this unit is responsible for most of the breast disease most of the breast disease arises from this unit again this unit is the acini and the related ducts to this acini to these acini and the surrounding small stroma. From the acini and surrounding small ducts, ND can occur. Number two, proliferative breast disorders can occur. We will discuss uh, these issues later. And cancer can occur from this unit. From the stroma surrounding, fibroadenoma can occur. Phylloid tumor can occur. So it is very important to know this unit, which is the terminal duct lobular unit. Don't forget this. Other diseases of the breast can occur from the ducts, for example, like what we call duct ectasia, for example, duct ectasia, or from the lactiferous duct, duct babyloma, or what we call Baget disease of the nipple occurs from the large lactiferous ducts surrounding the nipple, so duct ectasia, duct babyloma, Baget disease, and from the surrounding stroma of the breast, which is connective tissue and fat, stromal tumors can occur, for example, lipoma, fibroma, sarcoma, for example, this from the stroma surrounding. So most of the disease of the most of the diseases of the breast arises again from what we call terminal duct lobular unit, which is under control of the estrogen hormone. Then what about the ligamentary support of the breast? In this photo, there is what we call upper suspensory ligament that attaches the breast to the clavicle. It is responsible for the lifting of the breast and the preventing ptosis. Laxity of this ligament produces ptosis of the breast. This is the upper suspensory ligament. And there is lower, what we call inferior suspensory ligament that is responsible for what we call folding of the inframammary sulcus. Folding of the inframammary sulcus, this is the inferior 
inferior uh, 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 suspensory ligament of the breast. Also, there is a suspensory ligament, which is a condensation of fascia around the nipple that is responsible for projection of the nipple and laxity of this ligament causes what we call pubertal nipple inversion. Pubertal nipple inversion. The last ligament, which is very important, what we call Cooper's ligament, and we reserve it to the last because it is very important. What's meant by Cooper's ligament? As we see in this photo, Cooper ligament is a triangular ligament that attaches the skin of the breast, as we see in this photo, to the pectoral fascia. It is triangular uh, ligament that divides the breast into various lobes, not lobules, various lobes of the breast. This is a Cooper ligament. It has an oncologic importance in cancer when the tumor infiltrates the Cooper ligament by its fibrosis. Retraction of this Cooper ligament is responsible for what we call dimbling sign of cancer that produce a dimple over the skin. So what's important of Cooper ligament? The function of the Cooper ligament is to keep the conical shape of the breast, but its surgical importance, if infiltrated by cancer, it is responsible for what we call dimbling, dimbling sign of the skin during uh, malignancy. Lastly, speaking about the retromammary structures, behind the breast, there is number one, the deep membranous layer of the superficial fascia, then what we call the retromammary space, retromammary space, that is a space over which the breast slides over the, the breast is not fixed, the breast is sliding over the uh, deeper structures because it is moving within the retromammary space, and this space contains lymphatics, a very important lymphatics, then the pectoral fascia and pectoral muscles, and lastly, the ribs. And uh, uh, by this, we come to the end of this episode, and see you in the next episode, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.